Hello and welcome to India Today. This is Hesha and today I'm in conversation with Chris Gethin, the man who's responsible for many Bollywood celebrity actors to look how they look on celluloid. Hrithik Roshan's fighter is in pipeline and here we are talking to him all about Hrithik's fitness for fighter. Chris, welcome to India Today. I have to ask you what brings you here to India? Is it Vicky Kaushal right now? Yeah, I'm working with Vicky at the moment, getting him ready for a movie. So he's got some topless scenes at the end of this month and next month. So we have to prep him for that. You know, how do you decide that you have to be actively involved yourself and not your team when you're working on a project like that? Or when you're picking an actor, what goes behind your mind? I'm, I'm always hands on myself. Mm. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to articulate it to somebody else. A lot of uh, my clients do have trainers as well that they work with. That's specifically mostly from the weight training side. I provide the workouts, I provide the diet and nutrition and oversee that. But when it comes to certain times for a, a, a movie where they have to be topless or for a music video, then it's usually best that I'm there in person to actually mm. see and make slight adjustments if need be. Mm. Do you also end up going on sets? Yeah. Oh, is that more often than we could imagine? No, it's, it's not that often. Like, I'm not going on Vicky's set right now. I'm, I'm not needed. It's no, you know, it'd be pointless. But when, you know, the top comes off, then it's needed because mm. I got to ensure that we manipulate his macros dependent on what he's looking like and what, he, what the director wants him to look like in a certain scene. And, you know, making sure that we're pumping up and not over pumping and utilizing glycogen and the list goes on. You know, Chris, um, I also want to understand this particular thing from you. You're not somebody who took a very long time to get established here in India. You've been a name, you've been popular abroad, but when you came here, I want to know how did your journey start here and what sort of made you come here, A, eh? and how did you manage to get that recognition for yourself that you are one of the most trusted, you know, fitness people out here in India, who even like celebrities want to reach out to, especially when there's a huge project out there. Uh, so I got recognition here initially when I was the editor-in-chief of bodybuilding.com. This is going back like 2007 to 2012. And uh, the, that was the largest health and fitness website on the planet at that time. And half of the traffic would come from India. The other half was mostly US. Oh. And even though it was a US company. So I had recognition there. But I came over in 2010 initially because I launched a book. And I had to come over here as one of the countries that I visited as part of that launch. And that book ended up in the hands of Riddick. And that's how that relationship started with India. And yours and Riddick's relationship has been ongoing for decades, yeah. right? Over a decade now, if I'm yeah. not wrong. Yeah, since 2011, we've been working together. How's that been for you? I mean, Rithik is one of the biggest superstars we've got here. There's also Fighter in the pipeline and it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Rithik, in advance. Um, how's that association been for you all these years and getting a man who's such a perfectionist and looks like a greed god, thanks to you as well in many ways. How difficult is that whole entire process? Because what we see on screen is just the visual, but I'm sure to nail that, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes, right? Talk to me about that a bit. Yeah, like everybody just sees the success, you know, before and after picture, but there's just so much sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I think the easier that a client makes it look on screen, the more they've done in preparation for it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people would look at someone's physique and go, oh, it's all genetics, it comes easy to them. I guarantee those are the people that put in the hardest amount of work. And a relationship with Riddick and I, you know, we're both the same age. Uh, it, you know, it's very good, it's very, we've matured with each other. We've got to know each other very well. And, uh, you know, he's a genuine person, a very nice person. I only like to work with people that I feel are generally nice mm. and authentic. And he's definitely one of those people. And uh, he's very intuitive, very high IQ. He knows what works for him and what doesn't work for him, which makes my job very easy. Um, what kind of like diet and, you know, what kind of extensive workout or what is like a day in Ritik's life when he has to prepare for a role, something like a fighter where, as you said, somebody has to go topless, there's a lot of work that goes there. Yeah. What's your sort of method like to get that? So it all depends if he's working, if he's shooting during a day or during a night. Mm -hmm. But let's say he's shooting during a day, the day would usually start about 5, 6 a.m., something Which like that. Which is also your day starting as early. I'm usually up at 4. Oh, yeah. my God! <laughs> so whatever my client does, I have to do more. Obviously, I've got to be that shop window front. So, um, yeah, it's usually by about 6 o'clock. You know, he's eating his uh, breakfast and then we're hitting the gym 
probably about 45 minutes after that. And the workouts won't take any longer than an hour. It's very short, intense, but very, very difficult. You know, if you can train more than an hour, you're not training hard enough. Mm. Um, and it's usually five days, day, days a week of weight training, dependent on the sleep schedule. If the sleep is good, five days. If the sleep isn't as good, maybe four days because recovery enhances the performance. Yeah. And um, he'll have about six to seven meals a day, uh, just little and often. If you can't eat those meals, we're drinking them in the form of a shake, but usually try to go for whole foods mm. whenever possible. And uh, he'll do cardio once a day, sometimes twice a day, dependent on how far we are into the process of what he's got to look like. But usually once a day is the cardio. And that could be like, running, elliptical, Stairmaster, rower, swimming. We change it up. Sometimes it's functional workouts, so a bit of boxing, kettlebell work, battle ropes, plyometrics. Uh, that would be the, the, the cardio, and that's usually for about 30 minutes. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's lights out by 9 o'clock in bed. No later than that. I know that's difficult for a lot of Indians. Very difficult for a lot of Indians to do that by nine. But you know, when somebody has a super hectic shoot schedule as well, I think even at that point in time to sort of fit in their workout. I mean, I'm coming from my personal space. If I'm doing back to back interviews, maybe the next day I might not hit the gym because I'm just like, ah, oh, let me take it easy. But I'm sure that that's pretty much not the case when you guys are training on a project. No, not at all. Because there is a sense of urgency. So I always try to break it down. Let's say that we're getting ready for a roll in 12 weeks time. And we hit that single muscle group once a week. Mm -hmm. Then we only have 12 chest workouts or delt workouts or arm workouts to completely change the shape of those arms, delts or chest or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense of urgency. So we cannot miss a rep set or day. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if you're tired. You know, leg day doesn't care if you're tired or not. <laughs> doesn't matter, it, you know, legs don't care if you got four hours sleep the night before. There's a sense of urgency and, uh, you know, they, they put themselves through it. They don't call me up and say, can we take the day off? They're, they're, they're not those kind of people. They're very driven. You know, there's a reason why they're successful. They're very driven people. On a lighter note, has it ever happened with you that people have come with pictures of the actors who you've trained and been like, Ye body dilado, this is what I want. And like, I just have two weeks to get there. I'm kidding. But does that happen to you? People come to you and be like, oh my God, you're such a celebrity. You're a trainer. You train this one, that one. Now make me look like that. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. You know, I'll, I'll probably get a lot of Instagram messages today. And maybe after this interview, I want to look like Riddick. Well, you can't compare yourself to Riddick. You know, he's got very full muscle bellies, tiny joints. He's got good genetics. Mm. You know, not everybody is going to have his shape abs or his shape pecs. You've just got to be the better version of yourself. Mm. Just like we don't have the same personalities or characteristics, mm. you know, and you're not supposed to emulate someone's personality. You don't have to emulate someone's physique. Mm. You just got to be the best that you can be with what God has given you. Can you addition a little bit about what his diet was like when he was prepping for fighter? Yeah, it's very like bodybuilding-esque diet, kind of boring, kind of bland. But luckily, um, you know, his chef, Shabum, is very, very good at spicing things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he would make like an egg white burger. So, for instance, that burger would be like chicken breast, but the bun was actually made out of fluffy egg whites. So how he does it, I have no idea. So, you know, he, he, would spa, you know, he would spice things up a little bit. So it had that Indianized taste to it as well. But a lot of it was just, you know, the single form ingredients like your chicken, your egg whites, your whey protein, your fish, along with oats or quinoa or rice, you know, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sweet potato, that sort of thing. So it's kind of boring and bland, mm. but he's, and, and like a lot of my clients, they're not there to eat fun foods. Mm. They're they have a purpose, it's for function, it's for health span, and it's for performance mm. and for recovery. You know, as I mentioned before with the sleep, if you don't recover, you don't perform. If your recovery is down by 10%, then your performance is only gonna be 90%. Mm. So, you know, they understand that every calorie that they have to put in has to have a purpose and not, and not inflammatory, but maybe anti-inflammatory. So they don't survive on the concept of cheat days, is it? <laughs> no, I'll give them a cheat day if we're quite a ways out mm. that's absolutely fine but you know when you know the clock is ticking and there's a sense of urgency now and maybe it's like 
six weeks out, there's no cheat meals. Mm, no cheat meals, guys. Yeah. Anybody watching, don't come with pictures. Follow what he says. <laughs> but um, Chris, moving aside from like Vicky and, you know, Hrithik as well, tell me more about all the other clientele you have trained because it's so important that people also talk to you, the man who's actually made and made these people look a certain way. I want to know who all you've worked with. Yeah, well, I work with uh, MMA fighters, UFC fighters, uh, Supercross, professional Supercross riders. But I've got the majority of my clients are the people that are just off the streets or they're busy businessmen, they travel a lot. I've got a couple of pilots that spend literally more time in the air yeah. than they do on the ground. So I train absolutely anybody and everybody, uh, which is good because it keeps me on my toes. Like over the like nearly 30 years of doing this, I've learned a lot. Yeah. You know, of course I went to college and I studied this for three years and got my qualifications. Yeah. But that's just a drop in the ocean compared to what I've learned, you know, mm. from basically pilot studies uh -huh. with my clients, you know, over the time. But I love every, every sort of challenge, you know, it, it's very, very different. It's not just doing one thing, but they all kind of cross pollinate with each other. Whatever I learned from this person, maybe I'm going to apply to this person. And I go through these transformations myself. I've done Ironman triathlon, ultra marathon, mm. motocross, downhill mountain bike racing, bodybuilding. So I can actually learn myself and see how my body reacts. You know, also speak to me about the importance of picking the right trainer to train you. It's yeah. very imperative. I think you have to have a, a good personality match. So I don't work with people that I feel that there's going to be a clash there. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and that's fine. Just like, you know, you're not going to marry somebody that you don't vibe with yeah. and you're going to get very intimate with these people over a certain amount of time. So I think there has to be a good vibrational match and I'm not going to be condescending towards anyone. If I feel that I'm not the right fit, then I'll refer another trainer that would probably mold with them better. Mm. You know, um, also what I want to ask you is that especially today, as I said, that vanity has become a lot more important and people are giving importance to it as well, even a normal man. Um, in situations like these where somebody is working around the clock or maybe is a pilot, you know, or is in a job like mine, how do you sort of strike the balance to get your act right professionally also and not miss out on your workouts? How do you sort of get that balance? I prioritize myself as long as I get it done in, a d in the day. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Now, it doesn't all, like a lot of people have this misconception because people will always approach me and say, how many hours a day do you train? And oh, it's easy for you, you train for a living. Mm. My life is exactly the same as what it was before mm. this was a career. Yeah. You know, when I was working, I had a lot of jobs. I won't even go through them all, but I was following the same protocol that I do now. And uh, that misconception of training hours a day is just people, like I said, are maybe not training hard enough mm -hmm. or they're scrolling on their phones, they're posing in the mirror, whatever it may be. It's just like you go to the office, you're going to be intense with your time or making a deadline and then you're going to get out. It's the same with the workouts. Now, they don't always have to be in a gym. A lot of my clients train at home. Mm -hmm. Just need a set of dumbbells or your body weight or some bands, something along those lines. If that is inconvenient, don't justify that as an excuse to be lazy. Mm. You can always do something. You know, a lot of the time, like I just traveled for the last couple of weeks in Thailand. I was training in hotels a lot of the time, just in a room or out on the beach, doing some functional stuff, doing a lot of kickboxing because I'm in Thailand. Mm. There's always a way around it, but it all comes down to if you want it bad enough or if you're going to allow your environment to control you mm. or if you've decided that you're going to control it. Mm. What's the biggest misconception about health industry overall that you'd like to bust for me right now in india let's, or do, anyway? let's do india okay and let in then move to globally also okay. because i'm sure there are many all right sounds good uh, the biggest misconception here i'd say that i get asked personally in india is that protein powder is a steroid mm. or it's bad for you or something along those lines whereas uh, like i've come from a supplement industry i've had my own supplement companies and, uh, you know, I can tell you that protein powder is probably more healthy, dependent on the protein powder that you get, that's naturally flavored, naturally colored, naturally sweetened. It's healthier than milk mm. in, in itself because it doesn't have the lactose, the sugar. Yeah. It doesn't have the fat. It's actually, in a way, isolates. It's actually cleansed of that. So um, that's probably the big, biggest misconception that I'm going to take this protein, my hair's going to fall out, I'm going to come out with acne. It's like, well, unless you have an allergen towards dairy products is not going to happen at all. Mm. Um, and then globally, same as what's probably here as well, is that spot reduction. Mm. Some people say, I want to remove the fat from my face. I want to remove the fat from my love handles or triceps. 
you can't spot reduce unfortunately it's just the last place it's going to come off that's where you have your fat cells and you're going to have to diet from everywhere mm. in order for it to come off so you want those abs you want the thinner face it's going to come from the kitchen not always from the gym Damn, I'm so glad you said that because I myself have so many people who come and ask me also these questions. And listen, when you're going and interviewing somebody, please ask them, Kali, face ka loss kaise hoega? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you are going to overall drop the weight. It's just not going to be that. Um, tell me something personally. Are you somebody who also sort of meditates? Are you a person who goes into that state of mind as well? Are you that person? Yes, I am, of course, being in India. It's rude not to, isn't it? Uh, but I do use technology. So um, I have done 10 day silent retreats, Vipassana, that was mostly originated, I think, from SN Guenka, who had a, his first school here in Mumbai. So I've actually done uh, these 10 day silent retreats where I'm just meditating basically from six in the morning until nine o'clock, eight o'clock in the evening. Mm. And uh, that works. But sometimes I find because when I'm traveling a lot and I've got a lot of deadlines and I've got a lot of clients to work to look after and I've got several businesses as well, it's really hard to switch off mm. at night and reset myself for the morning going forward. So I do meditate only for about five to 10 minutes uh, in, in the morning, usually about 20 minutes in the evening. I like to I have a schedule, I'm a creature of habit. I like to read a book for about 20 minutes and then I'll use something that's called a brain tap that is, works with light therapy through the retina and the ear canals. And you also have a guided meditation and binaural beats. Mm. I like guided meditation. It helps me so much more. So if I've got a meditation instructor, great, but not always got that. Maybe it's an app on the phone, or maybe it's this device called a brain tap. So it'll guide me into that meditation. If I'm told to be silent and just be alone with my thoughts, if I think too much, I think too much, you know? So I just like to have something to focus on and that helps me so much more. When's your birthday, Chris? August 18th. This that makes you a Leo and a number nine? Yes. Yeah, that's, I'm 18th, me, I'm a number nine. So I know what you're, what you're saying because if I'm thinking, I'm thinking. You're <laughs> August 18th? I'm 18th, me. Ah, right, But okay. I'm the same nine, so I Got do it. get that. But, well, but that's a little bit of spiritual, astrological me. But um, tell me something, do you also indulge or encourage your clients specific, specifically um, to sort of get into meditation or yes. do you leave that up to them? No, 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, meditation, earthing, grounding, you know, taking the shoes and socks off yeah. or again, there's technology that has advanced so you can actually wear grounding shoes because mm -hmm. not everybody is going to get off a plane and take their shoes and socks yeah. off and hit a grassy patch. So I have my clients wear trainers called Bahi, mm -hmm. Bahi trainers, which are uh, grounding, earthing trainers. And uh, I also get them to meditate as well because it's very, very important in order to keep the cortisol levels down so you can build or maintain muscle and stay insulin sensitive so you can burn fat mm. that you have your cortisol levels spiked only in the gym. Oh. Only in the gym. The rest of the time you should be in that, it's called parasympathetic state where you're resting and digesting. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're not in that rest and digest state and you're wolfing down food and go, 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 cortisol's pumping, you're not going to break down the food or digest them as much as you possibly could. And so, for instance, you know, sometimes people wolf down a meal and they're like, I'm still hungry. Yeah. What else can I eat? Mm -hmm. Well, if they slowed down and actually purposely said to them, I like the texture of this food, the color of the food, the taste of the food, the smell of the food, and put that fork down between bites then they would actually feel so much more fulfilled and have less cravings. Mm. And they will be, because they're in this rest and digest state with lower cortisol levels, they'll be insulin sensitive and their body will utilize it without having a massive spike and leading to less cravings and more fat loss control as well. Yeah. So there's a, there's a great book called The Slow Down Diet. Mm. And it, there's a lot of studies that actually back up with that research. Is there any striking difference between anybody you've worked in Hollywood and Bollywood? The striking difference, um, I'd say, yeah, let's say the striking difference between like uh, Vicky and Riddick, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with Vicky, he doesn't sleep much mm -hmm. because his hours are just so, so long. Mm -hmm. um, I had this issue with John Abraham as well, where you know, it's, I think these people are too nice. Yeah. Uh, Vicky's like, one of the nicest people I've ever met, so nice. And uh, I don't think he likes to say no to too many people. So if the directors want him shooting till silly o'clock, he, he's fine and he, he does that. And he'll, sometimes 
he'll be running on four hours sleep, but you would never know. You would never know. He doesn't come across tired. He doesn't moan. He doesn't whinge. And on the set, he's so energetic. As soon as they say action, he comes alive. Um, but that wouldn't happen with Riddick, I don't think, because he's so much more injury prone since he's been a child that that lack of sleep would just lead to so much inflammation in his body that he'd be in injured constantly. Mm -hmm. So it's a priority for him. And those contrasts are very, very apparent with Riddick. I could probably get him training six days a week, even though he is like 50 this year. His body will just adapt because he's focusing on his recovery and his sleep. Mm -hmm. With Vicky, even though he's a lot younger, that you know the maximum, maximum would be five days a week, probably four, because... Uh, you know, he's, he, he just doesn't sleep as much, but it doesn't bother him at the same time. It bothers me more than it bothers him. Mm. Is there anybody in particular that you'd really want to train, you're hoping for, or you'd be like, I haven't done that at all? No, I, I, I never go after any clients. I, um, you know, if they come to me, fine, we'll have a consultation, see if we, uh, we uh, match, if we vibrate. And I'm fine, you know, I don't have any motivation to go after anybody in particular. Great, this is fun. I hope this helps answers all those questions that people had. So thank you so much, Chris, for removing time. I think this was so informative for me as well. Just speaking to you has made me feel how important it is to work out every day, not be complacent if I have to look like this when I'm 50. <laughs> but Chris, thank you so much. Lovely oh, speaking you. with you. Appreciate thank you so it. much. Mm -hmm.